Very soon we'll be joined by the brilliant Alan Carr, but now it's time to welcome our first guests of the show. They are the stars of this summer's blockbuster, Twisters, which follows a group of storm chasers in Oklahoma. Now, before we introduce them, let's take a look. I want to help people, and they're the only one to get me close enough to a tornado to do it. I don't chase anymore. It's Tyler Owens. He calls himself Tornado Wrangler. You thought you could destroy a tornado. In theory, but I never had a chance to get close enough. You want one? You ever see anything like this? Never. Oh, please welcome Anthony Ramos, Glenn Powell, and Daisy Edgar Jones. <laughs> Uh, Glenn, the premiere was last night. Uh, it's always good to attend a premiere, but Tom Cruise turned up, your mate from the old Top Gun. TC showed up. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a pretty wild night. I mean, the fun part was that Tom was... He was next to me, Daisy's right behind me, Tony's right in front of me, and every... Like, for every second of this movie, Tom was just so excited for all of us. He's turning around to Daisy being like, that was great. He's a Hitting huge Tony movie guy, though. Yeah, right? yeah, he's, he's obsessed by movies. You know, man. it's just, it's, it's, it's such a cool quality. He's such a, a rare individual who just really roots for everybody, but really roots for people that want to entertain audiences. And this movie is really all about that. This is a big summer blockbuster, and it delivers in every way. So to watch Tom, to experience that with an audience and Tom, I mean, he was, like, getting the audience riled up. I mean, he was laughing <laughs> louder than anyone cheering. It was just great. It was great. Yeah. Well, you've got fans in the right places. I have to say, it is a blast. He's completely right. Saw it today, just absolutely loved it. Um, Daisy, some viewers, though, might remember the classic Twister. So this is kind of a new chapter. Tell us a bit about it. Yeah, it does. It really feels like a new chapter. I mean, I mean, it's set now, and, and it's really exciting to dive back into the world of storm chasing with all the technology we now, now have. We have, like you know, um, YouTubers and we've got sort of, they've got new technology, new ways to do CGI. So it, it feels like there's a lot of love for the original in our film, um, but it's exciting to have kind of a modern, fresh go at it. Anthony, you actually shot this in Oklahoma during actual stormy season. What was that like? Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was rough. Um, you know, every day was uh, was unpredictable. You just, you just had no idea. I mean, the, the forecast said one thing, but, uh, you know, at any moment, the the sky would shift and the sky's blue now it's gray you know and now there's wind blowing out of nowhere and uh you know i think we just always had to be prepared for for the unexpected but the the team was so good like just everybody was so on it and uh you know and we, and we were we were prepared for like every kind of emergency you know whatever you know like if we were prepared for any emergency you know if if, if there was one thank god there, there weren't any so you guys all play storm chasers, although there is a certain amount of rivalry among your characters without wishing to give up too much away, Daisy. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, there's definitely some competitiveness between them. I mean, Kate is, you know, she's very much a kind of... She's experienced something quite extreme at the beginning of the film, which you, you learn, and, and it, it sort of marks her journey. Um, and so she's definitely a lot more sort of sensible. And then uh, Glenn's part, uh, Tyler, is a lot more of a sort of the cowboy he's chase. He's a bit of a dude. <laughs> he's a bit of a dude. He's a bit of a dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a dude. All right, cool. <laughs> you are he likes yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's a cowboy scientist. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's got the, the wranglers, the tornado wranglers. I got a big belt buckle, a big hat, and... <laughs> we drive into the storm, cranking music. We have a good time. We have a good time doing it, yeah. Well, it must have been an interesting movie to shoot because you've got, like we said, the real uh, Oklahoma weather to deal with, but then also you've got to recreate tornadoes and what they do. So was it a case of lots of wind machines or lots of people throwing stuff at you? How did all that come about? Yeah, it wasn't the most comfortable filming experience. I mean, you always look cold in this film. <laughs> I was constantly yeah. cold. cold. Yeah. Well, actually, I was very hot in Oklahoma, so sometimes the rain was quite welcome. But um, yeah, we had like an actual jet engine that was blowing at us. I mean, I found all sorts of stuff in my hair. I mean, it was a kind of. It felt like we were in a twister a lot of the time when we were filming it. Yeah. Glenn, you've actually said that this scene that we're watching now is one of your proudest moments uh, that you've ever created. Well, I think this is what, something that really um, embodies what this movie's about, which is like uh, our director, Lee Isaac Chung, came up with this idea. He saw this shot of a guy who's in a garage, like went out to look out, you know, seeing a, a tornado coming. And then he went into his garage. The tornado basically came through. It caused chaos and he walked out and there was nothing left. And um, this shot was designed to be recreate what it actually feels like 
to be in a tornado in real second by second experience. And I think it does a really good job of putting the audience in the seat. It is, it's, it's well. really visceral. And, and also what I love is the film really brings the, the kind of magic of it and the science of it to life a little bit too. Um, Anthony, we've had a, a, a viewer asking, what was the most, Tyler says, uh, what was the most interesting thing you learned about tornadoes making this film? I mean, how, how much there still is to find out about them. Like I, mm. I thought that, that these people who've been studying it for so long, they, they knew actually more, like they, they know so much, but there's still so much to like, why do these things happen? Like, you know, how, how, how does it start? How does it go from, from being in the sky and in the clouds and then what's happening to the point when it touches down on the ground and like what's happening inside the tornado? So, so these, you know, that's why these people chase, they go out there to, to, you know, these are real people that they do this for a living and they put their lives on the line to hopefully get as much data as they possibly can to bring it back to an entire team at the weather center to then study and then hopefully come up with, you know, some kind of solutions to, to how it happens and how to stay safe from them. And yeah. so there's so much, there's still so much to learn. And also just quickly, this was a real test for you as actors because it was actually shot on film. This wasn't a digital recording. So you only have a couple of takes to do things, is that right? Mm. Yeah, when you're shooting, you know... Not you, that you need a couple of takes. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One take, one you, you, We have <laughs> reputations, obviously. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, when you're shooting on film, I mean, that's what's another really cool thing about this is we're shooting on film, which really gives you that, like, 90s blockbuster nostalgia, but also causes, you know, in dusty Oklahoma, causes mm. a lot of... Uh, you know, a lot of issues. Thank God we had like a top tier camera department, but mm. you could open up that mag and you could have a dusty mag and yeah, and then you got <laughs> it's, all gone. Oh, it's yeah. all gone. Yeah, you yeah. can't use there any. There's nothing worse than a dusty <laughs> mag. <laughs> dusty mag. Nothing worse than a that dusty used to be mag. your nickname. All I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. That, that part didn't make it <laughs> no. to the big screen. The, the end result is fantastic. <laughs> uh, Twisters is out in cinemas next Wednesday, the 17th of July. And the time now to welcome our next guest. It is the doyen of Italian DIY, Alan Carr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alan Changing Hands is back. Yes, I know. Yeah, second series. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's all written, all ready to go out on uh, Saturday. Yeah. Well, for those that missed the first one, just give us a brief explanation, if you will, of what it's all about. OK, basically, it's my life growing up in Northampton as a very butch boy. <laughs> and, my, <laughs> and my dad was like this football manager of the town, very macho. It's basically Northampton's answer to the crown. <laughs> It stars the absolutely brilliant Oliver Savelle, who plays a young you. So let's just take a quick look at him in action. You know, if you wanted to go out the weekend, I can always drop you into town. No. Gary needs me. He can't play a plunk on his own. Of course he can. He loves pulling the straws out. Go and have some fun. Why don't you go bowling or something? Oh, uh, no, I'm not wearing a communal shoe. Well, something else then. You don't want to bring that to your mum every weekend. I did. Spread your wings a bit. You are nearly 12, Alan. Oh, he's, he's brilliant. He's, he's so, so well talented. Done, Alan. What's well it like done. for you watching... Cos he is sometimes more Alan Carr than you are. What's it like for you watching him play you? Well, sometimes it's quite insulting, cos I'm on <laughs> set writing it, and then I can hear the director saying, ''Can you get Alan's comedy teeth, please? Comedy <laughs> teeth to the set?'' And I'm like, ''I am here, do you know?'' <laughs> And then you see him, he puts the teeth in, he puts the glasses on, and he's like, hello, ready to go. So it's very strange. It's like Clark Kent in reverse. But, I mean, you, re you, you realise how, you realize how old you are, cos, you know, I'm explaining to him, like, fax machines and all that, and I'm like, this is like texting, you know? Mm. This is how we texted, and, you know... But, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's very strange. Is it true that you were a little bit worried that he might have grown up a little bit too much after the first series? Yeah, yeah, cos he came in and he was... It shot up. Well, I'm like... My voice is never broken, so I'm fine. <laughs> but... <laughs> But he, we had to do some, like, special manoeuvres with the camera. I mean, you'll know all about this, Hollywood and all this, but, you know, like, standing on boxes and stuff just to get it right, cos he had shot up, you know, what they're like. Oh. And like you mentioned, Alan, uh, so the show's a real nod to the 80s, and you had to explain some of the props to Oliver. Now, we haven't told you about this, but we did actually get hold of Oliver, and <laughs> he had this to say to you. <laughs> I love learning about the weird items that we had on set from the olden days like the cassette player and that weird phone that I didn't know how to use. <laughs> but if I could have nicked one of them, I would have nicked the Walkman. What would you have nicked and why? What would I have nicked? Yeah. yeah. 
going back to the old school. Oh, I liked a Rubik's Cube, like a Rubik's Cube. Yeah. Yeah, what else yeah. would I Still can't complete one of them, can you? No, <laughs> no. What I do is I just peel the squares off and then put them back on. And it's like you've yeah. done it and you have yeah. that sense of satisfaction. <laughs> the fact that he said the olden days. I know, honestly, honestly. He can't believe it because uh, he said, I saw a film, 1984, Terminator, like this, as if it was like, you know, wow. like a dinosaur movie. I remember so. seeing Fire for the first time. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a big part of the series is your family connection with football. You explained briefly earlier on, but just tell us in more detail, if you can, about your family's connection to football in Northampton. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone... Um, yeah, my, my great... My granddad was um, played for Newcastle United and uh, West Brom. Boeing, Boeing. That's what they say, isn't it? <laughs> and, then, and then my dad... Um, my dad played... Uh, was a footballer for Northampton and became a manager, then became a scout for Man City and Newcastle and everything. So he's been in football from 16 to 74. So, obviously, every time I went to school, they'd go, I hear we've got Graham Carr's son here, and they would make me team captain. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> there's been a terrible mistake, please. <laughs> I mean, my dad, to this day, still thinks there's been a mix-up at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> There's some hairdresser looking out the window at, you know, someone playing football going, why? My salon. <laughs> Who's going to look after my salon? <laughs> <laughs> How have you been getting... That should be the follow-up to the sitcom. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The How salon years. How have you been years. getting into the, to the Euro spirit, uh, the football tournament that's on at the moment, Alan? I, 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 I know you're surprised. I watched the... We won in penalties, didn't we? Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And we did also see this online. <laughs> you and your on-screen wife, Amanda oh. Holden. <laughs> yeah. Have a little look before it's you talk us through it. It's coming home. It's coming home. It's coming. Football's coming home. Come on, England! Oh. Have you just been to watch the game at a Barbie themed party? <laughs> well, this is, we, we're doing um, the Italian job, but this time in Spain, and we were meant to like be rollerblading down Malaga, down the boulevard, and of course, Amanda goes, Don't worry, Alan, I'll sort the costumes out. Here we are. <laughs> She looks like Barbie. I look like a fat Ken. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. I was feeling the Kennedy. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Alan's new series of uh, Change It End starts Saturday at 9pm on ITV1 and ITVX. Now, with two huge... Absolutely. So, guys, uh, Glenn, Anthony, have you kind of caught up with any of this Euros fever that's going on over here at the moment while you've been visiting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, the, the last game with England and uh, Switzerland, right? Yeah, I was actually seeing a friend of mine, Danny Bain, in this play faulty towers and uh i've never experienced a show being like they couldn't start the show because <laughs> because people want everyone's on their phones yeah. watching the game and clapping every time during pen <laughs> the penalty kicks and uh yeah it was crazy like the crew kept coming out they kept bringing up the signs with the phone with the with the line Amazing. in between and uh yeah it was crazy but uh so okay. they won. Yeah, well, you know what it's all about. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, good luck to England tomorrow. That's all we've got time for tonight. Thank you so much to our wonderful guests. Yeah, we're not on air tomorrow, but good luck, England, as I said. And thank you, Alex uh, and Roman will be here on Thursday, joined by Jenna Coleman, Hugh Jackman and Ryan Lowell. Have a great evening. We'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>